On today's episode of Always Go Big, I'm going to share with you a little bit of the movement coming out of Milwaukee. No, I'm not talking about the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm talking about Sam Lister. Hear how this young entrepreneur exploded on LinkedIn by sharing valuable content through video. Sam's going to inspire you with his no excuse attitude and the importance of aligning yourself with what you're passionate about. There's something magical with this talented group coming out of Milwaukee, and Sam's a big part of that. Look, you're not going to want to miss this episode. So have a seat, kick back, and buckle up because hashtag Sam I am is coming. Uh, we have Sam Lister here as a guest on the Always Go Big uh, podcast from Milwaukee. Uh, go Bucks, right? Go Bucks. <laughs> go Bucks. Uh, so, Sam, um, just a little bit of a kind of background of yourself and how you got started with uh, generating content. Tell us that story. Yeah. So, my name is Sam Lister. I'm a 19 year old content creator from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I started my own videography company um, because someone started paying me. I really didn't want to start a <laughs> video company. I was never like obsessed with creation, photography, video. So, it was kind of a like a wraparound way to get to where I am right now because unlike other creators that have been creating for five, six, 10 years, and then they started a company, I didn't have that route. I knew when I graduated high school, I wasn't going to go to college and I needed to test a lot of different things and find a way to make money instead of just getting a job because that is not what I, what I wanted to do. So that's what I did. I just test a lot of different things, uh, cryptocurrency, real estate, e-commerce, um, none of which really stuck with me, but I was documenting that process through video. And I was just making video diaries, video like vlogs type style stuff, putting them on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, just any way I can to share my story. And I knew that was important. Um, didn't really get anywhere though. But then when I hopped over to LinkedIn that fall, so when I, I graduated in June or so, um, spent that summer doing what I just mentioned, Hopped over to LinkedIn in August of 2018, and that's when video really started picking up. And then within the first month, I got my first video client just asking me if I can film for them and really do what I was doing um, on all the other platforms, but on LinkedIn. Oh. And I said, yes, I got my first client within a month. And then from there, I'm like, oh, people are paying me when I was still filming on just an iPhone. Uh, put all the money back into the business, bought my first camera in September launched my own company in early October and doing it ever since. Now I have uh, three employees and doing it full time. That is incredible. <laughs> I've seen your stuff. Fantastic stuff. Thank you. You're Thank not God. salesy at all. You're not, no. you're not like, come and call me and please, you know, take advantage of this. What was that first conversation like when they reached out to you? Was it, tell us how that went. Yeah. So it was through kind of a mutual connection and this goes back yeah. to, it's really, the most important thing you can do when you're first starting is surround yourself with a good network. So throwing it back way to my junior year in high school, all of two years ago, <laughs> I, yeah. I met one connection, but I met one, like my first business connection in a sense, my junior year. And then I just kept the, con the connection going. And then he introduced me just to a few more people, two or three more people and oh, host workshops yeah. and stuff. So I went to a workshop, a commons workshop, um, the, f the summer after I graduated high school. So while I was testing a lot of different things, I went to this one event and from there I was introduced to Joe, which is the founder. Mm -hmm. And then that fall, he saw what I was doing on LinkedIn already. So we already had, um, kind of a connection going and yeah. we've just had a lot of mutual connections at that point. Then he reached out to me and said, Hey, I've seen what you've done on LinkedIn. I want to do the same. Can you help me? And I said, awesome. sure. What, what would that even look like? And that was, that was nine months ago and they're a client ever since. So it was yeah. really just that one conversation of, hey, let's just try this together. I'm going to invest in you with my mm -hmm. time and a monetary investment, sure. obviously, just to kickstart uh, my business and kind of get a little bit more traction as I go on. Mm -hmm. And just from there, I hit the ground running and just kept uh, producing valuable LinkedIn content and continue to not sell people. Just because yeah, there's... like if you have the leverage of bringing more value than your community, mm -hmm. then you win. Yeah. All the time. Like all the time. Once you get too salesy, you can't get back. It's very oh, hard yeah. to reverse that. So right. if you consistently bring value to your community, yeah. that shows. 
You know, uh, talking to um, folks that are in um, thinking about launching a personal brand and whatnot, a lot of times they're fighting the doubts of, I'm not good enough. I'm not qualified. Did you, being at such a young age, 19 years old, did you have that thought at this first project? Like, wow, I do it for me, but for someone else. And then how do you overcome that? Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I so I going back. I hated video at first. Like mm-hmm. I did not want to do video. I was uncomfortable in front of the camera. I didn't know a thing wow. behind the camera. Um, but it was really just that one first initial client where I'm like, okay, like I I know I know this connection. This is this is a chance for me to just overcome any fears. Pretty much learn on the job in a sense, um, and just really hit the ground running. But yeah, at first I was super intimidated. I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, using my age as, a, as an excuse that says, Oh, I don't need to do X, Y, and Z because I'm only 18 or I'm only 19 and I have time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but pretty quickly I switched my mindset and reversed mm-hmm. like my age being my biggest excuse and my biggest weakness to my greatest advantage because 100%. I realized, <laughs> I realized like there's one thing we can't get back and that's time. Yeah. So right when I switched that in the, in the like following months since I started the business, things started to really click and really get going. Like going back to your original question, like how do you overcome that fear and overcome those negative thoughts? Mm-hmm. But it's like, realize everyone's just human. Everyone mm-hmm. sucks at something. Like Gary says it all the time, yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk that is. Um, like, but it's true, everyone sucks at something. Mm-hmm. Like no one is perfect at everything. Yeah. And like being perfect never helped anyone. Yeah. So it's like, just, just digging deep and like finding that humility and finding yeah. like your authentic self, what makes you happy and doing whatever that thing is. Sure. Then, then you see, you see results and like, I don't know, ev- everyone's different. So I don't have one cookie cutter answer and say, Hey, if you sure. do this one thing, you have no negative thoughts anymore. So right. Um, right. I can't give super like personal advice because everyone is different, but just mm-hmm. like find something that you really like to do. And mm-hmm. you can do it for 12, 13, 14 hours a day yeah. and do that one thing. And right. once things started, starts to move, um, mm-hmm. then you see, oh, this makes me happy. I can continue to do this. And then you notice less negative thoughts and less doubt come into play in your mind. Yeah. And, and I tell my, my folks, um, if you suck and you still do it, you're inspiring them greater than if it was easy for you to do. Because yep. you're still doing it, man. And, and that yep. to me is just, I get goosebumps thinking about it. Now, um, sometimes I'll, I'll do a shoot and I'm like, this is a filler week. You know, this is not. Mm-hmm. And the views are like way better than one thinking, man, that was the best one I've ever done. And then no one's looking at it. Have you figured out a secret of like, are you surprised sometimes by lack of views versus something blowing up after you do a shoot? Totally. Um, I, I evaluate it all the time and what works and what doesn't. I found that if I'm truly authentic and truly just document and share my story and don't sell anything, just genuinely bring value to people, then it clicks. Um, I know. So I got back from Washington DC for a three day video shoot a few weeks, uh, last month sometime. And just prior to that, I wasn't really creating much just cause I was neck deep in client work. And then I'm like, okay, I just need to make a video just because I haven't in a while. I just set my phone up in my hotel room and just filmed a super quick video right before the day started. It was, I probably it probably took four minutes to to film. I edited it together. It was like a one and a half minute video, and it just blew up. Um, <laughs> like with within that, like I checked it at noon, and it was at like ten thousand views already or something like. <laughs> It, like it just stuck with people and it's because I revealed that authentic self and like what I was actually going through at the time filming that I did not think anything of it. I just sure. thought, Oh, I need to get on camera just cause I haven't in a while and I'll post this not expecting anything. And then it just blew up. But on the reverse end, I've also put in four five, six hours into editing and filming a super well-polished video. Yeah. And then it gets like, a thousand or 2000 views. And like, it just, it's, yeah. it pretty much just dies. Yeah. Um, but that goes back to the message behind the video. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, being, having it be aesthetically pleasing and having all the bells and whistles and captions and everything, it helps. Um, but the, it just proves that story is king. Like there are still huge creators on the platform that just still film just with their iPhone. Look at like Mark Metry. 
he just yeah. filmed with like Apple Clips and he just absolutely crushes it. Yeah. Um, and like he doesn't have like a huge studio. He's not like a super polished videographer that spends hours and hours editing, but he has a great message and he's just a fantastic storyteller. So just go back to the story and the message behind your video and mm-hmm. stop worrying about um, the kind of the outside noise of, oh, I don't have a camera. I don't have perfect lighting, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But hone in on your message and hone in on your story because that's what really gets people's attention. Yeah. And, and I think e- even to that, we live in such an agenda filled world. Agendas in politics, agendas in social justice, agendas in churches. And when you tell a story without a hidden agenda, it's the story, the story carries everything. Um, so the top three things that someone wanting to launch their personal brand via video should know. I have a conversation with Q all the time on this exact, exact topic on mm-hmm. how we don't like um, when other people say they build other people's personal brands, because that goes back to what actually is a personal brand. Like I, even though I help other people share their personal brands, I'm not building their personal brand because a personal branding is yourself. It's, it's you, you. Right. it's who you are. It's the stories you have. It's the experience you have. So right. dig deep into those three. Like mm-hmm. what makes you, you and mm-hmm. tell that through video people like I can try all day to just be like Q and just be like Eric oh, or totally. something. It's not going to work because I'm not them and they're not me. If right. Q tries to be me, he's going to fail because I'm me. If I try to be Q, I'm going to fail because I'm not Q. Like, yes, you can pick up tips and tricks from these, from other like creators out there, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And collaboration is awesome but just don't try to be someone you're not. And that's something I kind of fell into the trap of um, when I first started creating, like when I first got my camera, I would, I strayed away from the documentation process. So before that I was just documenting, I was just creating to have these videos in 10, 15 years to look back at. But when I got my camera, I strayed away from that. And I wanted to produce these super well-polished, amazing videos. It was just more superficial content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like, I, I did get away from the documentation process and I was trying to be someone I wasn't. So now I've realized like I need to uh, like go back full circle to that documentation process and really hit that hard instead of pursuing something I'm not. I don't want to be one of those, like there are these crazy good creators out there like Peter McKinnon and Sam Cole, they're like other aesthetically pleasing, crazy creators. Yeah. But then there's like the Gary Vee side of things and it's like, mm-hmm. Hey, I'm actually bringing crazy value at scale. Right. I, I kind of want to blend those together, but I was so far to the left or right or like I, I was trying to pick a side when I kind of fall in the middle. So really mm-hmm. finding like your balance is important. Yeah. Um, and just don't try to be like everyone else. Try to be yeah. different. Try to share your own stories, like who you are, how you got here, where you want to go and just things that no one else can, can say. Yeah. Yeah. No, great message. Great message. So um, you mentioned Q. Uh, and yep. he's part of the the Milwaukee crew out there um, yep. that is just producing some incredible content. Uh, I see it on LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys do it also on the other platforms. Um, how does that relationship or how did it get started? Is he an influence to you? Uh, do you influence him? Tell us a little bit about that relationship with some of this. You've got, what, at least five or six content creators coming out of Milwaukee in this agency model, and it's fantastic. Share a little bit about that. It was back in August. He, the misfits, um, did this LinkedIn local Milwaukee. And at the time I was only creating LinkedIn for a few weeks there. So I was like, okay, I'll check it out. I, I saw Q online, mutual connections connected us like once before, but we really didn't like talk at all. Um, but at that event, I'm like, okay, this is important. And just really since then we kept the uh, connection going. And I've learned so much from him as far as storytelling, what to do on LinkedIn, um, how to start a company, all of these things. I've used a lot of his past failures to help myself avoid those, uh, sure. which his main goal is. That's why he shares all this. That's why <laughs> um, he does what he's doing. So people don't have to go through what he went through. And I think that's awesome. But yeah, I've I've gotten really close with the, the whole Misfits crew, Q, Eric, Brema, Izzy, all of them. So it's, it's cool seeing Milwaukee kind of yeah. not, not lead the way in LinkedIn, but like have a big LinkedIn influence, which is, I think lead the way is, a- <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it is. but yeah, no, like 
that goes in the sense of collaboration is important. Like yes. I'm trying to collaborate more with the Milwaukee creatives and just showing like, Hey, what's like, we can collaborate and we don't need to say, Oh, my personal brand of yours. Like right. I'm fighting you. It's like, it's healthy competition. Yes. I want to be Q. Yes. I want to become bigger than him. But like, that's yeah. just all like joking fun. Like, yeah. As yeah. long as we grow and help each other, like we grow together and a whole community grows together. I think that's like Milwaukee is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, Q does a collaboration with Jackie and Jackie does a collaboration with Eric and I do a collaboration with yeah. Dremel or something. Like there's a lot of just synergy there in, in Milwaukee. And I think that's important for any region. Like mm -hmm. if you have talent in your region, which all regions do, it's not right. just Milwaukee. So yeah. if you're looking to grow a community in, in your physical community, say Miami or Denver or LA, mm -hmm. um, like just, just collaborate with people just because that's, that is synergy at its finest. Like you get sure. both, both networks on, on your end. And like, that's, that's the, that's the way to really grow. Yeah. Just in watching your content, you have to figure, you have to figure out the, the viewer has to figure out on their own that you own a company called blank slate media. You don't talk about it. And, no. and I think this model can, if you're a W2 employee, you can do this. Don't mention your company name. Just talk about your expertise and share that over and over again. So this is my last question. I do want to give uh, an opportunity for you to share about your company, Blank Slate uh, Media, and where to go to, how to get a hold of you, what your guys' expertise is. Uh, share a little bit about that as we close this up. Yeah, so we are a videography service company, uh, obviously located here in Milwaukee. So we help kind of three different niches. So we do events, uh, not weddings, but more so like business events, business gatherings, networking events. So we highlight like event recap videos. We also help with pers the personal branding side of video. So making LinkedIn videos as you see all the time. And then the, our, our, main, our main clients are the businesses. Um, creating short form social media content at scale for businesses. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to run X amount of ads, say five ads, and then I want to post a video a day or something. Then we will create the 10, 15, 20 short form social media videos for that company um, at scale. So people don't create enough. So we help them yeah. create enough in a sense. Well, again, uh, Sam, uh, I really appreciate the time that you've, uh, you've spent here. And um, I, I hope that other cities kind of model what you guys are doing with the collaboration. I'm here in Las Vegas, a lot of content creators uh, out here and, and just the tips that you've given on coming together, one physically, uh, and then kind of generating content and then, and then cross sharing. I think that's uh, I think it's a model that, um, that we can all follow. Uh, just as we go, what's the best website uh, URLs that folks should go to find you? Yeah, so a lot of my content lives on LinkedIn. So just type in Sam Lister, S-A-M-L-I-S-T-E-R on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at Sam Lister underscore underscore. And then from there, you can find Blank Slate Media um, information, okay. uh, URL www.blankslatemedia.com without the A in blank. Um, sure. But yeah, LinkedIn is where a lot of my content lives. I'm also on Instagram post post quite a bit on there as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back to your day and uh, remember never go small, always go big. Never go small, always go big. Thanks for much.